Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm very delighted to welcome you all here on this um, on Monday morning, and uh, we're going to do our usual makeup magic um, session. Delighted to see so many of you. Um, what we thought, what what I'm going to start off with is a question to all of you. Uh, it's, it's quite a simple question, really, and that question is, why do you wear makeup? Um, you know, you have a choice, you don't have to. Um, and I choose to wear makeup every single day of my life and have done probably since I was about 16. Um, so my answer to that question, I'm sure you all have your own particular ways of thinking about it. Um, first of all, it's, it's pretty obvious that I wear makeup because I think it makes me look better and I like to look the best that I can. I also feel it makes me look more like me, uh, by which I mean that without makeup, that's my default. Um, that's not what I look like because for most of my life and for most of the day, I look like I do when I've got makeup on and when I take it off, I don't feel like it's me anymore um, and therefore it's, a it's an essential part of who I am and I make no apologies for that. Um, I think some people would probably think that I should but I'm not in prepared to. Uh, it makes me feel better in the sense that once I put my makeup on and I feel more like me, it makes me feel more confident, it raises my self-esteem and it makes me feel like I can face the day. My makeup on my face means that I can face the day. Um, I face the day in a completely different way once I've put my makeup on. So uh, there's definitely an aspect of helping me to feel better. I think it helps me to look healthier in the sense that a bit of blusher and some of the color that I put on my face um, lifts my features and I think makes me look healthier. I also think it makes me look more sophisticated. And I think this is one of the things for those people who often wear makeup or more often wear makeup when they're going out. So they want to complete their look, their outfit, and part of their outfit is the makeup that they're going to wear. So, you know, you probably wouldn't go to a wedding without at least a little bit of lipstick on or something. You know, you want to make that extra effort and look uh, more sophisticated. So I think that definitely is one of the effects of makeup. And I'm, I'm my final one for why do I wear makeup is that I actually actively every day enjoy what I think of as a very creative process. Um, when you're applying makeup, you're using paint and brushes, just like an artist. And we call, we call people who do it for a living a makeup artist for that reason. And I love the idea that I take the uh, quite unpromising canvas of my face without makeup and I create something which, in my view, is considerably better. Um, and, you know, I enjoy it enormously as a result. So they're all the reasons that, uh, that I do it. Now, there's another reason, and we're going to explore that today, and that is that makeup is wonderful for camouflaging or correcting those uh, problems that you have on your face, which you would rather um, were less, you would, you would like to be less noticeable. We talked quite a lot in our last Ma Makeup Magic Monday about all the problems that I've had with my skin and blemishes and stuff. And obviously makeup was massively important to me then because it really concealed the extent to which I had very bad acne rosacea. So I'm gonna pass over to Sally now and she's going to go through a demo of various ways that she thinks of makeup as corrective. And um, so, so Sally, over to you. Good morning. Right, okay, well, I've got the weird, weird look today is, as you can see, I've actually done my makeup on half my face, but not the other half. Um, I totally scared the postman this morning um, and, and my cat and anyone that's seen me. It is very weird. It, actually, it's quite a fun thing to do. If you have never done this for yourself, do yourself in one, one, one side because it makes you very precise when you do the second side. It's quite a good sort of training exercise, but hopefully you can see that one side, I do look hopefully a little bit better on that side than I do on that side. Um, and what I'm gonna do is try, try, which is quite tricky, try and um, match up, oops, sorry, match up the other side um, with a, through my computer and mirrors to either side. So the first thing I wanted to say, when you are trying to correct correct your your um your face is for me as we get older we often get more discoloration on our on our face um more shadows show there might be age spots there might be sunspots darker circles so for me using foundation and concealer um i do this 
foundation or light look beauty balm and I'm actually using a combination of both today for me is essential every single day um even when I do my five minute makeup you've probably seen in the video I still put my foundation on because I think for me that creates the canvas on which I'm going to paint the picture um and the first thing and we talked about this quite a lot last month is skincare preparation and foundation and primers go on much better when the skin is in good condition. Um, I've been using the hydrating clay mask regularly and I absolutely love what it's done for my, my skin actually. Um, it just means everything goes on better and stays on better and it's smoother. So I've already cleansed um, and I've put my, my serum on and my day moisturizer on. Um, I did it obviously both sides, but I've done it on, on the unmade up side. What I'm now going to do is put my face prime, my smooth like silk face prime onto the side that I haven't done. Let's just clip my hair back. Create the lovely look. It's so weird seeing yourself with half a face on. Um, and it's interesting, even just putting the primer on to the face, the side that I haven't got it on, it kind of takes out, it mattifies everything, smooths out everything and prepares it for the foundation so I will always put my face prime on not you don't need very much um, but this is a absolutely for me an essential part of creating that really sort of flawless base okay so what I'm doing today is I am using continuous cover foundation number two with a little bit of light look beauty balm number one um, so what I tend to do Trisha talked about being an artist, and this is where you really can be your own makeup artist, because by using, for me, by using both the products, I can totally custom make my color for my face, even when my skin slightly changes color in the, the summer um, and the winter when it goes a bit paler. So what I do is I use my hand as a makeup palette, actually. So I'm going to take a little bit of the, um, continuous cover. I don't need very much. I'm only using on half my face. That's the number two. And then I'm going to put a tiny bit, let's see, of the Light Look Beauty Balm number one. And I do that because I like the way both of them together make the perfect texture for me. Um, I also like to make a little bit of a mud pie and put a tiny bit of primer with those two. And what I do then is I take my foundation brush, which is the brush number three, and I sort of mix them together on my hand. Um, and now I'm going to apply on the, on the bits that I haven't done. Very weird doing it on half the face. I'm just so used to sort of putting it everywhere. And I'm putting it on with my foundation brush. And really, I'm holding the brush quite firmly at the bristles. I put a little bit under the eyes. And then I'm just going to use my finger. First of all, I'm going to get a clean brush and just buff it in. Because if you keep putting more and more product on, then you'll build up too much. So I'm really buffing it in. So if you can have two brushes, it's well worth it. Um, if not, Again, just using your fingers to pat it in really helps. So this for me is an essential part of creating a much more even look to my, it's like my canvas, but I will be painting some color on it as Trisha said. So as we get older, we do get a lot more dark circles, um, in here, you can see it's much darker in my inner bit near my nose. Hopefully you can see the that side where I have already concealed. So I'm now going to use some concealer. I'm going to use concealer number two with my concealer brush number four. I love the texture of this concealer because it's creamy. So it's basically giving me a little bit more help in the areas that I need it. So I am going to, first of all, put it into you can see in that little bit there and just take my ring finger and tap it. Now I've got some dark circles so I'm going to 
place it where there's darkness, so tap it in. And again, using the warmth of my finger, tap. Now, we've all often got broken capillaries around the nose area. Um, so it's really good to just, you might find that you've got some little sunspots, some age spots, areas where you need that little bit of extra help. The concealer is honestly so easy to use. But the secret is not, not to go too light, particularly under the eyes. A lot of women think they have to go very, very light underneath the eyes. If I've got a lot of darkness, then I do sometimes go a shade lighter. Um, but if you go too light, it can look as though you've got some panda eyes and it can make it look worse. So it's better to keep the concealer really, really similar to your foundation colour. Top tip then to hold all this in place is to use a very, very fine powder. And the translucent powder that um, Look Fabulous have is amazing for that. Um, so what I do is I take the big powder brush and I just swirl it on. But if there's anywhere that you put sort of smaller areas of concealer, I keep a um, this is an eyeshadow brush number seven, and I keep one of these just for putting powder on around my eyes so it doesn't have eyeshadow on it. I want to put dark shadow on. I find that that will just set that concealer in place. It's important that the powder you use is fine, otherwise it will sit in fine lines, but this one doesn't. It's brilliant. So I've sort of done, hopefully, my face to match the other side. What I'm going to do now, um, before I get onto the eyes, is, as you can see, I have got quite a few broken veins on my eyelids. Even if I wasn't going to be wearing eyeshadow, for me, covering those up makes a massive difference to the way I look. And I absolutely love, if I can find it, my, I've got so little room here, there it is, my Smooth Out Eye Prime. Um, so this, is a brilliant product. It will just take away any bits of discoloration. Now you don't need very much, tiny amount. I tend to put it on with my fingers and then blend it with the concealer brush. It's important when you put this product on to make sure your eyelids haven't got any oil on them and that they are dry. Um, so just pop, so I'm sort of put like, about like that. And then I'm going to get the concealer brush again and just smooth it over. So even if I wasn't going to wear eyeshadow, by putting this on my eyes, hey, it's just sort of, it opens them slightly, but it's smooth. Oops, still got some on my finger. That wasn't very clever. You see how little you need. You don't need a lot of this product. It's important. It spreads really well. But it will just do two things. It will get rid of all those little fine veins, make the eyes look much smoother. And if you do wear eyeshadow, it will keep it on and it will make sure it's a true color. So it's not being discolored by the color that you've got on your eyelids. And it will keep it on and stop it from creasing all day long. So absolutely brilliant product um, to use. So the next thing, the next um, correction that a lot of women, as we get older, need is, I don't know if you can see that, I don't particularly like very strong brows. I'm gonna hand over to Trisha in a minute, but you can hopefully see that this brow is a little bit more even than this one. This one sort of stops about there. Um, my brows aren't too bad, but they're definitely much less even and lighter and just not, not ideal. Um, so for me, doing my brows makes a massive difference to the symmetry of my face. Um, and I'm going to hand over to Tricia because the product that um, Look Fabulous have is amazing for that. And she's going to talk about how you develop that, aren't you, Tricia, before I use it. Okay. I am, Sally. I want to tell you the story about uh, our brow shade because it's, it's, well, I hope you find it interesting. When I was putting the brains together for Look Fabulous Forever, I worked very closely with this brilliant cosmetic manufacturer. He's a very small manufacturer. We still use him for all our makeup and uh, 
I love him to bits really, because uh, when I went to see him about creating the range, I didn't have very much money. And he said to me, okay, I'm gonna make you 200 of each of the things that you want uh, for the range um, to get you going. And then you can sell those and come back and get some more. And I didn't realize at the time that his normal run for makeup would be somewhere in the region of a thousand or 5,000. Um, so he made no money. On, uh, on that for me, but he did it anyway. And I feel that he was one of the sort of first investors really in Look Fabulous Forever. Anyway, um, one of the things that I wanted, very, very much wanted, was a very a realistic and natural looking brow product. I tried various things that were on the market and I didn't like many of them at all. And I particularly didn't like pencils. So um, I was inspired by my sister-in-law, Jenny. And Jenny, um, who is a little bit older than me, a year or so, she had had a problem with her thyroid. And for some reason, all her eyebrows had fallen out. She still had eyelashes and she still had hair, but it was her eyebrows that uh, had gone. And she'd always had really good eyebrows. Now I'm gonna get Emily to show you a photograph of Jenny um, without her eyebrows. When I was putting together the range, so this was before I launched the product, I used, um, I used to go and stay with my uh, sister-in-law and brother because they lived near uh, Ipswich, which is where the cosmetic manufacturer is located. And so I, I often used to stay there and I was in, often using Jenny as my model. So I'd say, Jenny, will you try this? You know, Alan, who's the cosmetic manufacturer, Alan's given me this to try, can I try it on you? So I, I did experiment on her quite a lot and it was very, very helpful. And she said to me one day, you know what really, really bugs me is that I, you know, I haven't got eyebrows anymore. It, it distresses me a lot and I don't know, I don't really know how to, to go about uh, correcting it. So I looked at her and I thought, you know what? Because she was using a pencil and she was taking a pencil and she was literally drawing like a hard line with a pencil, just like a child would draw eyebrows onto a, a, a pencil drawing. And I looked at her and I thought, what she needs is something similar to what an artist would use. So a very fine brush and maybe some liquid paint. And then she could literally recreate the illusion of brow hair by uh, building up the color, the shape, and so on. And that's the idea that I had. So I had this sort of light bulb moment and thought, that's what she needs. So I went back to Helen and said, how about that? And it took them about two or three months. They kept sending me stuff and it was either too thin, the paint was too thin or too watery, it was too thick, so it was too globby. Um, it wasn't the right color, it wasn't the right um, you know, consistency, whatever. And then one day, uh, it, something came through the post and I, I tried it, I tried it on me and I thought, oh my goodness, I think they've cracked it. And um, I, again, was with uh, Jenny and my brother and I just said to Jenny, I want to try this on you. So what I did, because she had no eyebrows, I knew that the thing to do with eyebrows is to do this measurement. So they need to be the same width apart as the, uh, as the base of your nose. They're too close, they'll look odd. And if they're too wide, they'll look odd. So this and this, needs to be in balance there and there. And then that's that middle part of your eyebrow. That goes from the base of your nose through the iris of your eye and up to the, uh, the arc, the top of the arc. And then the length has to be consistent with the base of your nose, edge of your eye. And then that's where your eyebrows need to finish. So I put these three dots. I looked at her and I put a dot did my measurement with my straight straight line and I put three dots one there one there and one there and then very carefully having shaken this up by the way you'll hear when you if you use brow shape you'll hear that inside there are little um, um, ball bearings and they're in there to to um, to shake up the product so that it, it, the, the consistency of the paint is, is correct when you put it on because it separates in the, in the little container, it will separate. So it's got these ball bearings and they've solved the problem of it separating by that. And then because, it, because you have to shake it up, it tends to load the brush rather heavily. So you take off the excess off on the back of your hand like that. And then you've got the perfect amount on the brush to start creating this effect. And I'm not doing it on me because I've already done my brows. 
And this is what I did on Jenny. The after picture is of Jenny with, um, with uh, my prototype brow shape. And I've done the measurements very carefully. You'll see when you see the photograph that it's actually very subtle. I didn't do it heavily. She wasn't used anymore to having heavy eyebrows because she had no eyebrows and hadn't had for some time. So I did it very gently. I did it very subtly, but she was absolutely thrilled. And when I'd finished, she looked in the mirror and she said, oh my goodness, I don't think anybody looking at me now would know that I haven't got eyebrows. So um, having got the prototype, uh, the one that I thought would work best. We started off with this color, which I still use actually, which is the dark brown. We've now got blonde and gray. So if your eyebrows are very, you know, very faded and you've got white or gray hair, or you've got blonde hair, and you don't you, you feel that this is a bit dark uh, I don't feel it's too dark for me the other thing is that you know you are using a brush I hope with it and the brush is phenomenally helpful to groom your brows first and then to just knock back the colour slightly if you feel it's too dark it takes a little bit of ingenuity um, care skill practice but I would say that once you've done it about four or five times you will find that it takes I, I've timed myself it takes me about 30 seconds um, and I go from having quite sparse quite straggly quite badly formed eyebrows my eyebrows are now um, not not uh, a particularly good shape to having what I think of as as eyebrows that frame my face really nicely and also frame my eyes so that's the story of the brow shape so Sally uh, you'll do your one brow now I will I'll pass back to you okay thank you um I would just like to say I used to use the um the brown one which is absolutely fine for me but when because I'm a little bit lighter what I would do with with the brown one the original color is as Trisha said I would always take it a little bit off on my hand first um, I'm now using the blonde one and I find I don't need to do that because it is a lighter shade so first thing actually before I do my brows what I forgot to do when I do my eye prime what I try and remember to do and I forgot because I doing it in front of you is to do my lip prime at the same time so that when I get to the lips it's dried so I did it on one side so I'm just going to put my never feather lip prime on which will help when we come on to lips which I'll talk about later so okay back to brows so I'm going to do what Trisha says and use the wonderful spoolie brush I don't actually think you can use this product properly without the brush um, shake it and this is the blonde one. So it's a really nice color. So I'm going to try, I don't know if I can do it in 30 seconds, Trisha, but I'm gonna give it a go. So I'm just- You've actually got it in 15 seconds. 15, okay, all right, <laughs> no pressure. Um, so little feathery strokes. Um, so for me, it's really important to get that tail because that's where I've lost my brow. And as Trisha said, I want that to be literally there and it's not I'm missing it for, by about about a half a centimeter to a centimeter so I just and the lovely thing about the blonde one is it's it is very 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 similar to my natural um, eyebrow color so it's very I tend to find if you put my hand put your hand there you can just sort of rest it so it doesn't wiggle with this one, I just sometimes need to build it up a little bit, which I don't need to do with the darker brown one. That one I just can put on once. Um, this one I can build up. So really, once you've got the hang of it, as Trisha said, you'll think, gosh, what was I worried about? But it is just a technique of very fine, literally painting in the missing hairs. And then the secret is to, when you've done it, to go back with that spoolie brush and soften it. Even more important if you use the brown one, the darker one, but um, really brilliant product. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a very simple eye makeup um, and I'm going to use the soft neutral palette. Um, I'm going to use my eyeshadow brush number seven. And I'm going to start with, I'm actually going to put the rose gold all over this time rather than cream, just to make a, a difference. Um, so this is just a sort of a peachy colour. 
And because I've got the eye prime on, it will come out as a true colour. So I'm going to bring it up to just above my socket line. It's a really nice brush to put this on with. Don't be frightened with eyeshadow to put enough on. I think a lot of ladies put it on very tentatively and it looks a little bit patchy. Um, you do need enough colour to cover. Okay, I'm now going to use taupe, um, which is the bottom colour. And I'm going to use, actually, now I'm going to put a little bit of the cream before I do that, just in the centre of my eye, just to bring that forward. Light brings forward, so a little bit of cream there. And if you've still got a little bit of sort of discoloration, it's actually quite nice to put the cream just into your inner, inner V as well. Right, now I'm going to go back with the taupe. And I'm going to put it, now this is where you can use Trisha's trick if you want to, of having a cotton pad. I'm trying to create a sort of a sweep of colour, just an arc above the socket line. This is quite a good trick if you aren't sure where to put it. And I am helping to lift the eye here. If you've got a slightly hooded eye, this is a good thing to do. Just lifting that because dark is pushing back. So I'm creating a slightly higher socket line than is there. Now, as we get older, most of us lose our lashes or our lashes become thinner, they become lighter, more sparse. For me, using um, a liner, but using an eyeshadow, makes my lashes look much, much thicker, um, the base of the lashes. So I'm actually going to use chocolate. I've got chocolate on today. I'm then going to go back with the chocolate and put a little bit more. So I've actually got a little bit of chocolate on that. You know, you can see that's a little bit lighter that side than that one. So I'm going to put a little bit more chocolate on over the taupe just to give a little bit more definition. But the first thing I'm going to do is to get my wedge brush, number eight, chocolate, which is a brilliant colour. Although it's brown, it actually, so it's great with blue eyes because it makes your eyes look really blue, but it also works. I know Trisha uses this as well because it's got a little bit of sort of an aubergine effect to the chocolate. It's a really lovely colour. So I'm going to take some onto my, onto my wedge brush. And what I've done is to put a little bit of powder, just in case you get spillage here, just a bit of powder there. And I'm going to build up my lash area before doing my mascara. So this is, again, much easier to do than putting on a pencil. So I'm lifting it slightly at the edge. So and I'm going to just press it into the base of my lashes. The secret with this is to keep adding more, I find, to the brush. Um, doing it bit by bit rather than just trying to do it in one perfect line. And I go, I'm going to bring it about three quarters of the way across today. You can bring it halfway across. You can go all the way across. So just what that does, it's an illusion. Of, you can already see my lashes, even though I haven't got any mascara on, they look a bit thicker because I have added dark colour to the base of them. So makeup to correct sparse lashes. This is easy, an easy way to do. And I, you can use charcoal if you want to, you can use aubergine, you can use forest, um, you can use midnight blue. They're all brilliant um, shades to use as a thickener. So I'm going to do the same underneath. You might not want to, but if you haven't got particularly, um, you've hardly got any lashes underneath, I find this is a good way, even if you don't want to use mascara, to create a bit of definition to the eye. So I'm going to just put a little bit of the chocolate, again, as close to the base of the lashes as I can. You can see it's starting to look like I've got more of an eye at this side. I'm really excited because um, 
I know a lot of ladies ask for the brown mascara to be made in waterproof. Well, I have just got my brown waterproof mascara. Now I must say, I usually wear black, but today I wanted to demonstrate the brown waterproof mascara. So if you want a slightly more subtle mascara look, the brown is brilliant. Um, so I'm going to use that. My lashes have definitely become straighter as I've got older. They used to curl a little bit, but they definitely, I don't know why, but they're not, they don't curl. So for me as well, I find that if I use an eyelash curler, so we'll just go back before my mascara, that makes a difference. Just before I do that, I'm gonna just do what I said and put a teeny bit of the chocolate. And I'm using my concealer brush to do this because I want to, I don't want it to, I want it to be fairly precise. So a clean concealer brush, obviously. I find this is quite good for this area. Okay, equal. This is where if you do this yourself, it's a really good test to try and, because normally when you do makeup, you do one eye and then you do the other and you balance it all up. So to do your whole face and then just to do it one day for fun. So it'll take a little bit longer, but I challenge you to try it. It's not something we normally do. So that's just giving it a little bit more definition that side. Okay, so I'm going to quickly use my eyelash curlers, um, which for me opens up the eye. Also good if your eyes are a little bit hooded. Um, I use the black waterproof mascara normally. So the brown, just to show you that, because I do, it's a really nice, really nice color. It's quite a, quite a nice dark brown, but it's just a little bit softer than the black, if you like brown. Particularly nice if you are wearing all the browns as well. So wiggle it through. For me, I find I need the waterproof one. I'm crying at the moment, I think, looking at the news and um, really, it just means it's gonna stay in place all day. Try not to forget those outer corners. You can build it up and sort of blink onto it. Wiggle it through. So you may want to do the bottom. You might not want to, but if you do, the brown one is a very nice, easy one to use. That on. My lashes are fairly, small at the bottom and I've managed to blob it too quickly so just take a cotton bud and de-blob everything. So for me the, the next thing that makes a difference um, when I'm doing my eyes or my eyebrows is to use some of the instant bright highlight this product my, I call it my magic magic pen I love this Click it and just put it underneath the, the, the highest part of the brow. And again, I would use, use your finger or I can use just a little bit of the concealer brush. Just defines the brows a little bit more. Um, brings the brows forward. I also like to use it just a little bit on the cheekbones here. And if you find you've still got a little bit of darkness, it's actually quite nice to put a little bit, I quite like to put a bit into the inner corner of the eye as well. So we're nearly done. What I'm lacking now on this side of the face is color to match this side and lips. Um, I'm getting quite hot in here actually, this room is very small. So I am getting a bit of color, but not the right color. So I'm going to put on some blusher. Um, I'm going to use a peach cream. This is my big one. And I'm going to just use my finger to bring that up. And as Tricia says, it's adding color. As we get older, there's less comparison of color on your face. You definitely, I find, if I have no makeup on, I just look very bland. Um, so for me, adding the blusher, and I tend to put a bit of bronzer on as well, 
um, makes a massive difference. I just feel much healthier. I'm going to use a little bit of, I'm going to just blend that with my blusher brush as well. So this is a cream, so it's very easy to apply. And I'm now going to just take a little bit of bronzer. So I like, because I'm warmer, I quite like to put that a little bit on top of the blusher, as well as using it as a bronzer. Now I've got, I've, I've gone for a fairly neutral lipstick today. I've gone for soft cinnamon, um, which suits all sorts of colorings. It's a really pretty color. So I am going to put some on my lips. Now, a lot of women are worried about thinner lips um, and they think, well, I can't, I can't um, add any, I don't want to draw attention to my lips. But actually, if you don't do anything to your lips and you've done the rest of your face, you will look unbalanced. So I would agree not to go for a really dark look if you've got thinner, thinner lips, but a sort of a mid-tone and make sure if you've got thinner lips that you use some sort of gloss or make sure your lipstick, the lovely thing about the lipsticks is they've all got a little bit of a sheen because matte lipstick actually is not very flattering um, for older lips. I know the younger girls look lovely on, in, in matte lipstick, um, but it, I think it looks better if you've got a little bit of a sheen. So I am going to, actually to save time, I will just use straight from the bullet, but if you want to do it properly, use the lip brush number five. But so, So it's soft cinnamon. What I'm going to do is put a little bit of gloss. And I love cinnamon kiss, but if you don't want to change the color of your lipstick, then use the clear gloss just to create a little bit of a sort of reflection. The reflection of the gloss makes lips look a little bit fuller. Um, and the other thing you can do is to put a little bit of your instant bright highlighter just on your cupid's bow just to bring them forward as well um, so i think we are almost almost let's just take my hair clip out hopefully i look a little bit a little bit more even than i did when i came on this morning when i scared the postman so i hope you found that helpful i'll hand back to trisha that was brilliant sally as always really loved it um, just a couple of things about new products. We're launching this month a couple of uh, wonderful, I'm really so excited about these products. One is an, a very, very beautiful soft um, little exfoliator. So we're extending out our range of skincare products from uh, the mask, which we launched last, uh, when, when did we launch that last month? I think, I think we sold out of that. We, we have actually sold out of our initial order of that, and we've, but we've got new stocks coming in very, very soon, um, like within days. And um, we are also, so we're, we're launching the exfoliator, we're also launching a hand cream. And the hand cream is, um, you know, it's got lots of vitamins and uh, particularly vitamin C in it, which is really good for age spots. So a nice, soft, softening, lovely, rich, gorgeous hand cream and we're launching that this month and I wanted to show you this I'm wearing today um this is a color a new color eyeshadow which I'm trialing at the moment I've got it on at the moment and you can see that it's quite a, a dense sort of um cobalt blue purple color um I, I saw this on a, a, in another makeup range and I just thought oh I like the look of that. So um, I sent it off to Alan and uh, they produced this for us. Um, and I, I used it this morning as um, the way that Sally used uh, her taupe as an, um, a sort of shaping accent color. And on my eyelids, I can't show you this one uh, because it's sort of broken up in the post, but it's another one I'm trialing. So here it's much more of a, um, it's like a very pale version of this so that we could potentially create a palette with it. Anyway, I think it's gorgeous. And uh, I particularly love this color if you're if you're full toned <laughs> like I am. And um, I will, I'm also today trialing um, a navy blue, uh, 
mascara. So we're thinking of extending the range out from, you know, we started with black, now we have brown and we're possibly going to have navy blue as well. So uh, if you like that look, um, I think it's probably more of a cool tone uh, effect, but uh, I don't know. Um, I always think with eye colours, um, particularly eye shadows and things, um, there is a wide range that suit everybody. Um, so it's not quite so important. It, I think it's the lip colour that you absolutely have to get right if you're cool toned or warm toned. Because if you get, um, if I wear a brown based lipstick, yellow based lipstick, I look absolutely dreadful. Um, today's lipstick is tulip pink. Um, it's a long lasting one, which uh, I'm liking a lot. Um, I think I might go to Emily now. Um, do, you, do we have any questions there, Emily, that we need to just answer? Yes, we do. Um, one quick one from Pauline. She says that she would still like some travel sizes for holidays. Could you just run through why we're not going to do travel sizes? OK, um, it's very practical, believe it or not. You want you want the practicality of, of travel sizes. It costs us as much to produce a travel size as it does to produce a full size. So it doesn't make economically it doesn't make sense for us as a business we are still relatively small relative compared to l'oreal to uh, clarins to these big you know that l'oreal i think it's l'oreal and louder own 80 and 90 percent of the makeup companies that there are out there there are very there are you know most makeup companies are owned by the big two now they have economies of scale and they can afford to do these things they make a lot on them um, but they tend to give them away as freebies and stuff like that. So it's really difficult for us because we have to source the jars, pay for the jars, we have to pay for the filling and we have to pay for the contents. Now you say, well, it's much, much lower content, but the, the combined cost of the, of the elements that go to make up how much things cost us to buy um, means that smaller sizes are not, they're certainly not a fraction of the price, they're much nearer to the full price that we have to pay for a full size one. So um, that's a very unsatisfactory answer, I know, and I accept. One day maybe we'll be big enough to be able to um, make a loss on things like that and, and to give them to you. Um, the other thing is that what I do I go to Superdrug or I go to, Superdrug's quite good actually, they've got quite a nice range and I buy at very low expense, little plastic uh, jars with, uh, uh, you know, sometimes they're, they're just little round jars with lids or squeezy bottles or whatever and I just decant. And I take, um, if I'm going away for a week, I take enough uh, cleanser, eye makeup remover, moisturizer, um, I don't bother with the serum because that's actually quite small to pack. Um, or the eye cream, that's again, that's quite small to pack. Um, so I literally just decant into little tiny containers, make sure that I put them inside plastic bags in case they leak and um, get around it that way. So I know that's an unsatisfactory answer, but I'm afraid it's the truth that economy, we don't have the economies of scale to be able to, to produce them. Anything Brilliant, else? Brilliant, thank you. Um, and then I, I would probably pass this one over to Sally because Sally mentioned it, but um, Jen asks, what is the best way to make sure there's no oil on your eyelids prior to putting primer on? Yeah, okay. Well, I think it depends on what you use to take your eye makeup off with the night before. If you use an oil-based one, there might be oil. What I wouldn't do is to use your eye cream in the day and make sure, and you shouldn't be putting eye cream actually on your eyelids anyway. So what I would do, say if you think there might be a bit of oil, just take a cotton pad, run it under some warm water, squeeze it out, um, or, a, or it doesn't have to be an actual cotton pad, it could be one of the ones that are uh, reusable, and just wipe over and then pat, really pat it dry, even just using a tissue or a towel, and you'll find that there, there should be no oil on there. Just, you, you can usually tell. So it's what you've used on it. If, you know, don't use a really oily product on your eye, an eye cream, and then put your, your eye makeup on because that, that won't work. Great, thank you. Um, Jan asks, uh, I find that my eye shape is not defined in the crease anymore and it tends to wrinkle when I try to define it. Have you got any suggestions for that? Do you mean, you mean this, this area, not the, not, not the, when you say define it? Um... I think probably this area, but actually in a, in a couple of weeks, we're sort of creating a lot of content around hooded eyes, aren't we? Which I think will be very relevant oh. for that kind of dilemma. Certainly using the matte shadows makes a difference and really blending, even if, you're just, even if you just use a wash of one colour, but bring it a little bit higher 
um, it doesn't have to be so precise then. So yet, therefore, it, it you know it shouldn't look creasy. Um, just just really really blend well. That's so important. Um, any any thoughts on that, Tricia? No, I, I'm the eye primer helps a lot to keep. Yeah in play you know it, the, the problems with older eyelids because they're bumpy um, I mean mine are, mine are crepey they're bumpy they're quite wrinkled if you use the eye primer it tends to give an, a lovely surface onto which you can then apply the matte eyeshadow and the reason that we have very matte eyeshadows with, with no um, glittery glimmery shimmery stuff in them is because that will um, exacerbate the problem you know, it'll make the problem worse rather than better, i.e. more noticeable um, and so on. So um, it's just, I mean, that's what we've been talking about today, really, you know, that there's sort of the way that makeup can help you to overcome those issues and problems that age inevitably brings. And, and that is the whole idea behind Look Fabulous Forever, really. I mean, every single product that we have and sell has, has been thought through from the point of view of what is the problem? Um, what can we do about it? And how can we best give you a lovely look whilst still you know accepting that there are inevitably changes to your face eyes lips as you get older and um that's what I, I mean that's one of the reasons that I think makeup is so brilliant because you know you you I think I know you feel the same Sally you, you start off with no makeup on and you put it on and you think oh my goodness <laughs> you know we're talking about uh uh, well, as Sally has demonstrated, she's done it in five minutes. It takes me longer than five minutes, but I don't mind how long it takes. I like I like doing it. So, the other thing, Jan, is is you saying that you, um, it tends to wrinkle. I think when we look close up at ourselves, I mean, I'm the same. You know, there's never that perfect line that there used to be when I was putting that number seven shape on before. Um, so by blending it and standing back, actually it's never quite as bad you, I think we're, we're often very very critical because we're doing our makeup so close maybe or looking in magnifying mirrors that actually we see all the little lines and wrinkles but when it's all finished and you've got your lips on and you've you've balanced it and you're standing back from your mirror no one will notice I think that's that's really important to say we're very self-critical so. great thank you both um and then Jen, this one for you, Trisha, to explain again. Jen asks, do we have any plans to reopen the shop? She would love to come in for a makeover. No, unfortunately. Um, the shops were a bit of an experiment for us. Um, I came up with the idea about two or three years ago, and uh, it was October. I walked into the office and said to Anna, who you know is our managing director, I said, I think I'd like to open a shop. And she said, Mum, go for it. Just don't ask me to do it. <laughs> to help we were very busy at the time so I did I opened the shop in Wimbledon, in Wimbledon and we subsequently opened the one in Guildford um, then we closed because of Covid uh, they their shops are incredibly difficult to um, to work from uh, from uh, the perspective of, of the numbers and so on and so forth we've made a loss on both shops um, every time all the time but that was compensated for by the you know the online business that we have um it it's it's challenging and difficult i'm not going to say any more than that so no we haven't got any intention i don't know whether you um know but we do offer online consultations on a one-to-one -one basis um with uh julie she does them she's brilliant uh anything else emily um charmaine's got her hand up so i'll just ask you to unmute charmaine for the question Mute. Yeah, so so really, really quick one. Hi, Trisha. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to know if there's been any um, progress with a, a hub in Europe so that um, I could order. I'm desperate to order some products. Um, um, yeah, Charmaine, there is. Um, so the people that distribute our makeup for us in the UK um, are have opened a have opened a hub now in um, I think it's um, it's some Amsterdam, somewhere like that's Holland. Really? Yes. Yes. So what we've got to, so Susie, I, I tell you, I tell you what the issue is. So um, when we were in the EU, all our makeup had to pass stringent tests and then had to be entered into a European hub in mm. order to be legally sold across the European Union. So mm. we have come out of the EU and we have had to have, we've had to employ a, a, a business, a company to retest and re, um, re approve all our makeup for the UK. Okay. Right. 
we've gone through this massive, massive uh, bureaucratic process in yeah. order for our makeup to be uh, now out of the EU hub because it's no longer relevant to us, but still pass all the stringent tests and all that kind of thing. So it's a compliance issue. And mm. that's taken Susie a huge amount of time and a huge amount of effort and quite a lot of money. We've now almost completed that process, okay? Fantastic. So having, having completed that process, we also have to comply with the EU. So we have to have parallel, but yeah. we, we did originally comply with the EU. So once we've got that process finished, we can then start shipping uh, because we've got all our paperwork. We've got, we can start shipping to the EU wholesale yeah. shipping and it will be then with our, um, the distribution people in, I think it's Amsterdam. And we'll let you know. So we'll, we will very much promote that, Charmaine. Brilliant. We're very keen that those people who are now struggling with having to pay duties and all that sort of stuff are keen to know. Yeah. We don't have a massive population of customers on the continent. We have people yeah. like you who are expats, mm. you live in Italy. And um, so we are, you know, and I, I think it's quite imminent. Um, I, mm. I mean, I certainly had March mentioned on, on you know, team uh, uh, meetings. So it's very imminent. We are doing it. We will be there. You know, we will be able to do it. Lovely. And that means that when you go onto your website, you'll go onto European website, you'll order, and that order will go through to the European um, distribution centre. Oh, that's fantastic news. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome, Charmaine. We're very conscious that we we want our customers, our lovely customers in Europe, to be to be happy and not be clobbered with all this. Uh, I would use a very rude word if I was uh, that kind of person, but I won't. <laughs> um, that's it for all the questions for today. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much indeed, Emily. Thank you, Sally, as always, and thank you to all of you. Um, we wouldn't, there wouldn't be very much point in us doing this if we didn't have an audience for it. And we have a pretty solid audience for these Makeup Magic Mondays. Um, and I love the fact that you uh, you want to come back and that you want to engage with us in this way. And I hope it's lightened and brightened your uh, your Monday morning a little bit anyway, with all the gloomy stuff that's going on. So thanks for coming along. Really appreciate you being there, and uh, we we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, bye-bye everybody. Thank you, bye.